Remember a couple of weeks ago, Victoria, we mentioned that Cam uh, Newton had joined ESPN, yes. mm-hmm. right? Uh, contributes to First Take and some other shows yep. at the Worldwide Leader. Yep. Uh, because he's on while we're on, I have never had a chance to actually listen yeah. to Cam Newton. But I will tell you that today... Mm-hmm. He has the greatest outfit I have ever seen on television. Oh, he came with a with a really nice fit the first time he was there. I haven't seen it since. They've all been but, wild. Oh, yeah. Today <laughs> is next level. I can't even describe. <laughs> yeah. It looks like something out of uh, almost Wizard of Oddish. Okay. Odd. odd. Wiz- well, yes. Uh, Wizard of Oz. I mean, it is almost Halloween, so he yeah. could be like dropping hints of what his costume's going to be. The like. hat. Oh my gosh! I think I can see it. It's, the hat it looks, is amazing. It, <laughs> it, Again, I don't know. Is. I've I've not heard him, but I the know. hat is next. Just for the hat. Back when we had good Panther things to talk exactly. about. Exactly. All right. Uh, but it's always fun to talk about the Panthers with Julian Council, Locked On Panthers podcast. My friend, uh, who is uh, on a uh, humanitarian mission, we're not going to tell you where, uh, but right now is on a humanitarian mission. <laughs> uh, let's talk about the Panthers' lack of wide receivers. Uh, Adam Thielen, Deontay Johnson, both out. They are throwing Bryce Young to the Wolves because Denver's pass rush is among the best, if not the best in football, certainly from the defensive end and defensive tackle positions. Um, This doesn't bode well with Xavier Liggett, Jalen Coker, Jonathan Mingo, and JT Sanders as the top targets uh, for Bryce Young. No. No, Adam, it does not bode well <laughs> at all. Um, but the the thought was that once upon a time that those guys would be the future here in Carolina with Bryce Young being the quarterback. But right now that's the present against a very good Broncos defense on Sunday and a head coach who, I mean, clearly has no faith in his quarterback. So I think even with Adam Thielen and with Deontay Johnson, it probably wasn't going to go well considering we saw how the play calling was week one, week two. And again, the head coach, Dave Canales, doesn't believe that Bryce Young can play and can run his offense and they can win with him. And every time he's been asked about Bryce Young, given a chance to say yeah. anything nice about Bryce, he only mentions, this is about Andy Dalton, it's about the team, <laughs> and that's what I'm focused on. Yeah, you you and I are on the, the absolute same page when it comes to that. Uh, that it's been disappointing, and I go, I, I might even go a step further in that I believe that Dave Canales uh, decided he was going to prove that Bryce Young couldn't play rather than try to get him to the point where he could, uh, and now he has to play, and they're going yeah. up against the wrong team with uh, the state of their own offensive line when it comes to pass blocking. And the truth is that even with Andy Dalton uh, and the fact that Chuba Hubbard has been so good running the ball, they have refused to really lean into the keep pounding mantra that this franchise has been about for like, like what, two decades. Um, But that's the only method. That's the only path forward in this particular game. If they can't establish the run and stick to it, this is going to get ugly. Yeah, the thing about the NFL compared to like college, it's already going to be a low possession game anyways because right. the clock is always running. So that's kind of what you want to do is just bleed the clock, try to have some nine, ten-minute drives that they can be able to stay on the field. And Juba Hubbard, I mean, he's been outstanding so far this season. He's leading NFL rushers who at least have 50 attempts this season in rushing success rate at 62%, which means 62% of his – uh, running like if rushing attempts like if it's first down he's getting five yards if it's third and two he's getting the first down so he's been really good for them this year uh i i don't really know what you can expect out of the passing game just based off of yes it's bryce young playing there again he looked terrible week one week two De- deontay johnson not out there adam thielen's not going to be out there is moton going to play adam I, I haven't seen whether he, he's available or not is I, he coming back i believe he is coming back their offensive line uh, and again, run blocking is their strength. The offensive line appears to be uh, as healthy as they have been. I'm, I don't think we're going to see Austin Corbett. I think we're going to see Brady Christensen no, yeah, again. He's done. But right. if Moten's playing, that, that's positive yeah. because I don't know how much you read into like PFF, but their, their rankings last week, Josh Nyman, who's been filling in the last two weeks at right tackle, really the last two and a half weeks, he was the lowest graded player on offense last week. While 
Brady Christensen has been among the top great yeah. guys the last couple of weeks since filling in for Austin Corbin, which is honestly long term. That could be great news. Yes. For both Brady and the Panthers, as they need to figure out who's going to be their center, it could be the guy they drafted out of BYU a couple of years ago in Christensen. Maybe they go back to Corbett, or he gets an opportunity outside of Carolina as he's been bouncing around an offensive line and be a free agent, which kind of makes it tough for guys like him. So if they're able to run the ball, which they have been able to, but I'm feeling like Denver's going to sell against the run, and their pass defense also is one of the best in the league. Yeah. Their number two pass defense, according to EPA, expected points added. Pat Sertans was the last couple weeks with a concussion. He's back out there on Sunday. He's been outstanding, of course. I'm sure there'll be a Panther fan or two on Sunday. They're going to compare Pat Sertan to uh, J.C. Horn as fans, of course, the <laughs> Horn there before him back in 2021. Because we can never let go of the pass, no. Adam. But, yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come down to run the ball. And it's always been a line of scrimmage game. I know people like to focus on who's the quarterback, yep. who the receivers are, or yada, yada, yada. No, nah, man, can you move the guy up front? And can you run the ball? Can you play ball control? Like That's how the Panthers can win on Sunday. And, I want to see if Dave Canales has it in him as a, as a play caller because this is the game where you kind of earn your contract here. You ha- you're missing the top two receivers. You have Bryce Young in there. Find a way to win because we see some of the best play callers in the NFL. We saw Malik Willis play in Tennessee. He was unplayable. Yep. But he gets to Green Bay. They lean on the run game, and Matt LaFleur is an excellent play caller, and they win both of those games with Malik Willis, and people were probably counting out the Packers. So Dave Canales would see it, man. You don't believe in the quarterback. Apparently you got this job because of what you did wizardry-wise with Baker Mayfield and Geno Smith. Let's see you do it on Sunday. Go out there and earn your money. Yeah. No, I, you, again, you and I are in uh, total agreement about uh, what, the, what they should do with their offense. I'll just throw another example. Uh, the mm-hmm. Pittsburgh Steelers won uh, you know, plenty of games with Justin Fields and his Four. inability to throw the ball down the field. And they they don't have a great running. The funny thing is, is that with Fields, who's a runner, m- more than he is a passer at this point, uh, yeah. they didn't have a great running game. Najee Harris wasn't as effective with Justin Fields. They bring Russell Wilson to the occasion, uh, into into the mix, who can throw the ball down the field. And in the uh, last three quarters of that game, it unlocked Najee Harris. He was better with Russell Wilson at quarterback than he was with when you change the math and you you introduce the quarterback into the run game. It's supposed to make it better for the running back, but it didn't. Mm-hmm. It made it, it it was better when Russell Wilson was the quarterback. Even though Russ, man, that first quarter was terrible, uh, and people had already thrown dirt on him. Uh, and I was I was watching Twitter during that game, and people had already decided that Justin Fields was better. And then in the next three quarters, they went, hmm, maybe, maybe this, <laughs> maybe Russ yeah, maybe, is okay. Maybe people don't know as much about football as Mike Tillman. I love that happens every single day where there's football going on, where early on in the game, Twitter is doing what Twitter does and like aghast at what's happening and just acting like they've never seen a football game where it's 60 minutes, y'all. Things can change. Yeah. Maybe give it some time. <laughs> no, qu- no question about it. And Tom and Tomlin looked. At, he had this giant smile on his face all game, uh, and then after the game, he uh, dropped a "This is why I'm highly compensated," which oh yeah, is Loved just it. the absolute a best. Bar. I am I am such a big fan of Mike Tomlin. All right, so you know deep- who wanted to fire Mike Tomlin that one time? David Tepper. Let's never forget that. Oh, uh, oh, he was the guy who wanted to fire Mike Tomlin. Oh, yeah, he was a part of the small group in Pittsburgh that wanted Mike Tomlin, the guy who's won a Super Bowl and never had a losing season, to be removed. Guy's a Hall of Fame coach, yeah, I would, I would want him removed uh, as well. Yeah. I've, I've said this before, as a, uh, as a former Jets fan, I will go back if Mike Tomlin ever ends up as the Jets head coach. I will, yeah, I will jump right in. Yeah, no, Mike, Mike is, uh, but I don't think he's ever going to, I mean, he's going to stay at Pittsburgh for I don't know how many more years, stay there as long as he wants. Yeah. I don't think they're getting rid of him. Uh, Stay there, Absolutely. stay there as long as he wants. All right, so defensively, uh, Jadavian Clowney comes back. Uh, what are the chances that uh, a defense that is really bad against the run uh, can like show something against the Denver team that really can't throw it? No, you know, that's the thing. Like Denver isn't a good offense. Now, when the Bears or the Panthers played the Bears a couple weeks ago, Chicago – Hadn't been a great offense up until that point. They had found some rhythm the week before, and that, of course, carried over against the Panthers' defense, which is one of the worst in the league, as we know. But the Broncos, like, they are 30th when it comes to third-down conversion rate on offense. They're also 31st in the red zone. Now, the Panthers aren't great in the red zone. They have actually improved from being the worst to only the fifth worst in the last <laughs> couple of weeks. But there's an opportunity where 
if they get Bo Nix into this, some of these long down and distances, and this is not a team that obviously has gotten after the passer. They're worse in the NFL in pressure percentage, according to Pro Football Reference. They only, they only have seven sacks, which is second worst in the NFL. Only Atlanta has yeah. less. Like, if they can get him in some third down and long situations, like, don't blitz. I know they try to blitz a lot of Gerald Vero, the D.C. has. Stay back, try to disguise some coverages, and get this guy to really think. Like, this isn't Bo Nix who's out here having a kind of season like Jaden Daniels is having and the kind of season Caleb Williams is having so far. This is somebody who, as we saw at Auburn and at Oregon, is susceptible to making some mistakes yep. in the passing game and did that early on against Seattle, I believe, in like week one or two. So if they can com- confuse him, that's their key to victory off- also on defense. It's getting him third and longs, and obviously going to stop the run on early downs. Denver's had five straight games, over 100 yards rushing. Javante Williams, North Carolina products, looked pretty good the last couple weeks. Mm-hmm. But if they can find a way to load it up, get them to third and long, try to confuse this quarterback, that, like, that's the chance on defense. Low possession games on offense – as far as holding the ball on the ball, running it, and then defensively, just got to get third down, find a way to confuse, confuse Bo Nix, and who knows? Maybe they'll shock the world. Yeah. I, I will certainly be shocked. Yeah, you need you need turnovers and some good fortune to win this game, uh, man. Again, Denver's not a great team, so when you're not a great team, you can lose to anybody. Uh, but I'm not, I'm not sure the Panthers necessarily qualify as anybody at this point. All right, final thing for Julian Council, and we're going to leave the humanitarian mission that he is on uh, on the cutting room floor. But um, <laughs> <laughs> let, let, let me just – I know we're, uh, what, about a week away from the trade deadline. With Deontay yeah. Johnson's injury and Adam Thielen's injury, Thielen was hopefully going to come back, and they decided – he worked the last couple of days, and they decided he couldn't go. Uh Johnson picked up the rib injury in practice, so hopefully he'll be okay. Uh, do you see both of those guys being here after the deadline? Uh, no, I don't think both will be here. Um, it's certainly possible one of them will be here, but are we sure that these aren't just the kind of injuries where the deadline's coming up and the team's like, okay, well, let's hold these guys out because we can't get them hurt. We need to find a way to ship them out next week. Like Could that's, be kind of what it that's what it feels like at least a p- part of it has to be that in their minds i know dave canales doesn't want to talk about hypotheticals because you know there's a ton of things hypothetically you think about as a head coach but i guess he's want to talk about that <laughs> when asked about it but yeah i have a hard time seeing those guys around with jonathan brooks coming back too you have to wonder whether miles sanders right. shift off it's not like he's had a much of a role uh this year and i mean he lost his role like week seven of last season after they paid him all that money which is again why you don't pay running backs yep. for all the folks who want to pay you bobbard um, and then like, Jonathan Mingo is going to get an opportunity. All right, show something and see if another team wants to be suckered into trading for you. Can't imagine they get anything more than like a seventh round pick as he has not been impressive at all. But I, I can't see that both Adam Thielen and Deontay Johnson will be here next after, I mean, next Sunday when they play the Saints at home. I would think Johnson's probably the one that has the better market. I don't know how much he's improved it, honestly, this season as he's had a couple good games. The rest of them, he's looked. Uh, fairly disinterested, like uh, right. on Sunday up there in D.C. where he just broke off his route and uh, ended up as an interception. Another thing that Dave Canales refused to talk about, even though it's clear as day. Um, <laughs> so, I don't know. We'll see. I don't I don't think both will be around. Feeling maybe could help a contender. I don't know well, how he's viewed across the league. He is 34. It's, he is, has one year left. There's right. an out in his contract. So, a team would have to kind of figure that out with him. But he's unlikely to be here in Carolina next year anyways. I, I just feel like those are the guys to look at. And, I don't know, maybe Bryce Young. Maybe maybe he'll be chipped off as well. Well, and I'm sure his value won't be improved on Sunday based off of how things are likely to go. Right, and uh, it just seems like if if your theory is right that they're holding Johnson and Thielen out and taking no chances based on uh, injuries incurred that they could play with, but we'd rather not to preserve their value. They are mm-hmm. simply jet- jettisoning this game as any chance to show bright, like to give him any chance. I, they should put him in like those big, uh, like between innings at Durham Bulls games where they have the sumo wrestling, where they uh, they they bounce into each other. Yeah, they should put Bryce Young in one of those outfits for this game. Well, this will be an, another example for Dave Towns to be like, guys, stop asking me about Bryce Young. We gave him five weeks to come back. He didn't play well, and he's like, well, it's not even talk about context. It's about the guys who are in there. That will be yeah. basically his messaging that he won't say directly, but it will be made abundantly clear like that's how he feels. So we'll see. Best luck to Bryce. I really hope it works out for him, honestly. And hope it works out for, obviously, all the Panther fans out there because the last thing you want to do is waste another Sunday watching a 
terrible offensive performance. Now, you could always choose not to watch the game. I encourage you to at least listen to Locked On Panthers and Adam Gold uh, <laughs> if you don't want to watch the game. But we'll see how it works out on Sunday. I, I'm, again, I really am putting this on, on Dave Canales because, like, you're a play caller. We've already seen examples this season where teams have found a way to win games with the not great circumstances. Are you good enough to do it? We'll see. You're the best, man. I'm telling you. Uh, you, you have, I, I've had this big smile on my face listening to you <laughs> for, for the last, like, 13 minutes, man. Uh, have fun. Have fun tomorrow. Uh, even though it might not be possible. Have- no, it's not going to be fun. I'm in Charlottesville, by the way, folks. That's why he's saying he doesn't want to mention where I'm at. I am, uh, I am dying hard. I've been for the last 31 years in North Carolina football. And, uh, hey, John Summerall at Tulane, if you're listening, please, please, I beg you to come here. Oh, wow. Already, already has the uh, has the the antenna up. Julian Council oh, locked, locked on Panthers podcast at Julian Council on Twitter. Thanks, man. I'll uh, have fun. I'll talk to you soon. All right, Adam. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.